They said it. Now we speaking on it. Welcome to the Telescope Channel. First at six, an Indianapolis woman is dead after traveling to the Dominican Republic for plastic surgery. It is a growing trend. U.S. citizens leaving the country to get those procedures. And WRTV's Adam Shumes and photojournalist Paul Chiodo have been working this week to try to find out what went wrong in the Dominican Republic. With a heavy heart, Sheree Terry reflects on the life of her twin sister. And she went to go get her body done in a DR. And she never, never made it back. Shikari Terry was a mother to a two-year-old and the proud owner of the Mini Blessings in Paradise Daycare on the city's east side before going to the Dominican Republic. And me and my sister had a type of relationship where we could get into it one minute. And then right after that, we'll be back friends and talk. And so I knew someone, right? I felt it in my heart. And I've been just trying to get help. This wasn't Shikari's first surgery this year. She posted on her Facebook back in February that she got surgery. Her family says it was a gastric sleeve surgery that she got in Mexico. Just a few months later on April 11th, her family says Shikari went with her friend Carlicia Williams to the Dominican Republic. So she definitely was healthy. Everything went wrong, it happened there. They both had surgery for a Brazilian butt lift and a tummy tuck. They say the surgery was performed by Dr. Jose Desenia, seen here before the surgery. But after she called me Thursday night, she just went right. The second day into recovery, which was Friday, um, the 15th, uh, Shakori was, I was, you know, moving around a lot more. And Shakori, I was still in pain, but I was moving around. Shakori wasn't really moving around. She wasn't doing nothing. She would lay in bed. I would go in there and try to get her out the bed, try to get her to come downstairs and eat with me. And she just wasn't responding well. Carlicia says Shikari was moved from their recovery house and admitted to a clinic in Santiago. When we go in there and I see Shikori, I almost fell out. Like literally, like she was on all these machines. She was unresponsive and she wasn't talking, wasn't alert, eyes closed, she's unresponsive. Carlicia Williams was told that Shikari was okay. Her kidneys were doing well and her body needed rest. Carlicia says Dr. Desenia said she was only sedated. So I'm like, so if you unhook that, you know, she'll be able to breathe and stuff like that on her. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's perfectly fine. Like, you know, her body just needs rest. Carlicia says she went back to see Shikari the next day and a different doctor was there. According to Carlicia, that doctor told her Shikari was having a hard time breathing on her own. But 20 minutes later, she says Dr. Desenia came in and told her Shikari was getting better and just needed dialysis. I reach out to the mother and you know, I'm telling them what's going on, but I'm trying not to scare them. But at this point, I want to scream like, get down here, like, you know. When Shikari's mom arrived about a week after the surgery, Carlicia says the doctors continue to say that Shikari just needed rest and they were told to leave. Carlicia was set to come back to Indiana the next day. Her mother's talking to her. Her mother, uh, basically, she tells me, like, Carlicia, I don't believe my daughter is alive. She was like, I know my daughter isn't alive. Why won't they tell me? By the time she got to Indiana, Carlicia said that she was notified that Shikari had passed away. So she was like, Carlicia, I went back to uh, my room. She was like, I was probably there for about an hour. She was like, they called me and told me Shikari heart stopped just that quick. I said, huh? She said, as soon as she went in, she said her daughter was already in a body bag that quick. Sheree and Carlicia say they just want answers. I reached out to the State Department. They said they can confirm the death of a U.S. citizen in the Dominican Republic, and they're providing all appropriate assistance to the family. We're going to keep fighting. We will not stop at all. Shakori was a very important person. Working for you, Adam Shumes, WRTV. Like, share, and subscribe, man. I'm Mr. Telescope. And you're watching the Telescope Channel. Right, has obtained video of a wild stabbing that led to an AK-47 style rifle being fired in a Seattle homeless camp. Take a look as a van pulls up to drop off food for the people who are living in tents on 13th Street, just north of Dearborn, between the Goodwill and Public Storage Building. The guy bending over to pick up food is David Charles Burchak. His wife has been having issues with a woman named Arius Beckett Sumpay, better known on the streets as Lady Gangster. Apparently, Burchak told Lady Gangster she needed to move her tent. Instead, she sneaks up behind him and shanks him repeatedly with a knife, lacerating his liver, intestines, spleen, and severing a tendon in his arm. 
Lady Gangster then casually heads up the stairs that leads towards 12th Avenue and the Navigation Center. Meanwhile, Burchak runs to his tent and grabs his rifle, managing to squeeze off a round before succumbing to his wounds. At that point, his friend, who is yet to be identified, takes the AK-47 style rifle and peels off a series of shots at Lady Gangster as she scampers up the hill. This is all happening at 10 a.m. on a Monday. Adam, who told us about the ordeal, was asleep in the red tent you see there at the bottom left of your screen. Sir, this morning I woke up and literally two feet from my head, somebody got stabbed and someone took an AK-47 to the air four times. I mean, I'm terrified. He eventually pops out to get some food. Meanwhile, Burchak's friend stashes the rifle back in Burchak's tent, where his wife tries to play keep away from the police, forcing them to get a warrant to access the tent, even though they can see the rifle clear as day through the mesh of the tent. Cops get a judge to issue a warrant for both Burchak and Lady Gangster's tents. Burchak's wife then bites one officer and scratches another, drawing blood. Police eventually seize the AK-47 style rifle and two bolt action guns. Lady Gangster, who stands out because of that huge neck tattoo, is still on the lam. This isn't her first run in with the law. She was already on a felony no bail warrant for escaping community custody after being convicted of another stabbing in 2019. Now she's got a half million dollar warrant for her arrest for this assault case that she's charged in. It's just another day on the mean streets of Seattle with shootings, stabbings, and bitings. 60 year old man in Umble is facing a murder charge accused of shooting and killing his girlfriend's 16 year old daughter. We spoke with the father and stepmom tonight as they are now forced to say goodbye. Our Tiffany Justice joining us live with this story. Tiffany. Right, the family still trying to wrap their heads around the fact that she was killed and how she was so brutally taken away. My daughter was a very wonderful, caring person. You know, she was very friendly, you know, nice, and she had her friends. Everybody loved her. A teen's life violently taken away by someone family says she trusted. This once quiet, humble neighborhood still in shock by a shooting that took the life of 16-year-old Lauren Uma, a student at Nimitz High School. She does not need to be let go or set free because that, um, a monster like that, that would kill an innocent little girl that he was in her life, that she trusted. For years. This man is now in custody facing a murder charge, the victim's mother's boyfriend. A suspect, six year old Van Brisbane, came out of the house, according to police, telling them to do what they had to do. Police say the teen was on the phone with her mother just before the shooting. We're told Lauren's older sister was the one who called 911 this morning, telling them that Lauren was being held at gunpoint by her mother's boyfriend. The mother out of town for work, arriving back home to her daughter dead. When he walked outside and said, do, and said, do what you gotta do, that was he, was, he was looking for death. It is too good for him. He needs to rot in prison. Police say as deputies were arriving to the home, they heard the gunshots as they were approaching the front door. Neighbors speaking with Fox 26 saying they're rattled by the death, saying it's going to forever change the neighborhood. This was a good neighborhood quiet. We don't have crime. So now when you look us up, the only crime you have is a murder. And it's a child. She was like, Dad, I'm going to give you a job. And that's what she did. And I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to get my own car. That's what she recently just did. Now, family says after graduating, she was planning to join the Air Force. Police say they're still trying to determine a motive and that Brisbane is not being cooperative. Hunt involving a missing Alabama inmate charged with capital murder and a corrections officer. The two last seen early Friday morning, inmate Casey Cole White and Officer Vicki White went missing from the Lauderdale County Detention Center while on their way to a local courthouse. White was jailed for murder and is believed to be a serious threat to the correctional officer and to the public. News Nation's Tom Dempsey has been following this case closely. And Tom, there was an updated reward announced today, wasn't there? Yeah, that's right, Ruta Bay. Earlier today, the U.S. Marshal's Office announced a $10,000 reward for any information on the whereabouts of this suspect and the corrections officer. And investigators described that corrections officer, Vicki White, as being in danger. That's the photo of the inmate.
On Sunday, local, state, and federal law enforcement officers continue to manhunt to find inmate Casey White, who faces capital murder charges in Lauderdale County, Alabama, about two hours northwest of Birmingham. On Friday morning, investigators say corrections officer Vicki White said she would escort him to the county courthouse by herself, going against policy for a mental health evaluation that never got scheduled. We're looking at all angles. You know, did she assist him in escaping? That's obviously a possibility. Was she uh, uh, kidnapped en route to the courthouse and, uh, you know, uh, taken against her will? That's uh, obviously another angle we're looking at. Sheriff Rick Singleton described Officer White as a well-liked supervisor with around two decades of experience. At the time of his escape, Casey White remained in prison for other crimes and faced charges for allegedly murdering Connie Ridgway in 2015. Her family found his escape tough to believe. Totally shocked. I mean, just completely shocked. Like, how is it even possible? The search in Alabama comes after other similar high-profile escapes by inmates with officers, including in Westchester County, New York in 2015, when prison worker Joyce Mitchell helped two men get out, leading to a three-week search to find them. And in Kansas back in 2006, when a woman helped a convicted murderer escape a maximum security prison in a dog crate after she said she fell in love with him. In Lauderdale County, the sheriff hoped the manhunt would come to an end soon knowing the inmate. I think she's in danger, whatever the circumstances. Uh, he was in jail for capital murder. Hey, what's going on? If you enjoyed this video, man, could you please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell at the side or the top, wherever it is. I hope y'all guys appreciated the content that I brought to y'all today. Remember, they said it. Now we speak it on it. I'm at the telescope. You're not watching. Telescope Channel.